All right, this is Rich at Capital B Supply. I'm going to do a, a demonstration of installing a package of bees. Um, normally, when you get your bees, uh, what you'd be doing is probably installing into a single deep box or into two mediums, uh, depending upon how big the package is. If it's a three pound package, a lot of times it's easier to go into two mediums if you're running all medium boxes. What I have here is actually a little different. This is story and a half. I have a deep on the top and a medium on the bottom uh, and these are on a pallet so it's a little different than what you normally would see but in any event a lot of times you're going into a single deep or two two mediums. The way you want to start out and a lot of this depends too on the weather. Now today I'm doing this uh, it's in the high 60s just about 70 so it's it's relatively uh, nice out here I'm not worried about my bees chilling or anything like that um, if you're doing this in colder temperatures, then generally what you can do is you can kind of pre-warm uh, the hive body with the package itself. And the way you do that is you'd go out to your colony and you take out um, just the frames that would ultimately be the outside frames. And then you could set that package cage right down inside and you'd close it up, okay, and put your cover on. And you could let it set like that for a couple hours and the heat that the bees are generating in the cluster when it's, uh, would help warm those frames prior to install. <clears throat> but in this case it's nice out, it's mild. Generally you'd only be doing that if your temperatures are below 50 probably that you'd want to pre-warm the combs a little bit uh, prior to dumping those bees in on cold comb. When you're above that temperature wise um, uh, they're going to have a chance to um, uh, climb back up and cluster back up. When it gets colder than that, you dump them on cold frames in cold equipment, uh, that could be a problem for them. It might be a little bit of a shock. So you could always pre-warm. But in this case, I don't have to. I'm going to take and, uh, take and um, ultimately dump these bees right into an opening here. So what I have, guys, i got my package of bees. Um, <clears throat> just to talk about what this package is. This is a three pound package. This is one of the spares that we had from distribution. These bees have been caged for seven days now. Um, I had shook them down and uh, uh, checked the queens and anything that was, um, as we get near the end, I was do that. And so the queen was okay in this one. We'll find out today um, if she's still okay. And uh, again, depending upon the circumstances, you might, uh, you'll hear different opinions on whether you should spray them down with some sugar syrup or not. Um, really, in the end, the only pur purpose of the sugar syrup spray was to get them a little sticky so they weren't flying so much when you installed them. Cold weather, I wouldn't bother doing it. In fact, it could be detrimental to them. Um, warm weather like this, um, the only thing it'll do is maybe give them a little bit of feed, but here again, you wouldn't have to. <clears throat> You'll definitely notice, you know, the bees will be different acting as soon as you spray a little syrup on the cages. Uh, and some people say too that spraying syrup on them uh, could actually be harmful to them in these package installs. Some people just say use straight water. Um, so maybe less is more. Not doing anything in terms of spraying them down because you're going to shake them in. There's going to be bees flying regardless of what you do uh, in this process. Uh, so this particular uh, set of packages, these have three whole Benton queen cages in them um, and uh, they have attendance with the queen. Uh, you'll see other styles of queen cages, California minis, Jay's bees, which uh, are plastic cages. Um, those generally, depending upon the producer, the California minis will not have attendance. <coughs> the Jay's bees may or may, may or may not have attendance with the queen, depending upon the queen producer. Um, uh, California mini, uh, you'll have to put a candy tube or marshmallow in when you, if you're going to do slow release. With these Benton cages, they already have the candy in the third uh, pocket of the cage, uh, so you just have to pull a cork. However, you want to double check and see um, what the situation is with the attendants in the cage. Most all producers will put some kind of cover on if it's a wood cage like this um, to prevent the syrup can from accidentally coming out in transport. If you're dealing with a bee bus, the bee bus will have a sliding plastic plate that goes over the top of where the either syrup can or gel feeder is. <clears throat> and so there's three different styles of feeders you'll find too in packages. Um, they could come on liquid syrup like these bees 
They could be on a gel feeder, which is like a gelatinized uh, corn syrup blend. Um, uh, that has an open bottom to the feeder. It gives a lot of uh, space for bees to feed and it's nice and you can also verify typically depending upon how they made up the feeders if they're transparent or kind of uh, semi-transparent feeders you can actually see the feed in the cages yet how much in the cans yet how much is in there they're plastic cans uh, the other way you'll find people will ship bees they'll ship them on hard candy so they have a metal can but instead of syrup the bottom is gone on the can and then they just pour in um, uh, molten uh, sugar and uh, let it harden and then that becomes their um, becomes their feed for transport so you see different things in transport one of the things you always want to be prepared of when you're installing bees is that depending upon especially these wood cages uh, it's a little more variable in terms of how the cages are made and sometimes the syrup cans are you know hard to get out uh, the plastic cages, the, G, the B buses, those are always pretty consistent. They got a nice finger grip, so it's easy to get the cans out. But sometimes in these wood cages, um, and even when you watch the guys packing them, sometimes, sometimes they got to jam the can in there because it doesn't quite fit because the wood shrunk. Uh, sometimes the stand inside is a little short, so the can doesn't sit down in there like it's supposed to. And um, that can be one of the, um, the frustrations sometimes beekeepers have is trying to get the cans actually out of here. Uh, now, <clears throat> if you get in real trouble, you can always uh, cut the screen out the side and dump the bees out the side. You still got to get the queen cage out of there, but at least you got the bees out of there if, if that it becomes the issue. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab another tool here. So it's kind of handy to be prepared, um, either to have a, um, uh, another hive tool with you if you're having trouble getting the can out, or a little screwdriver, or um, um, a little clamp tool, all those things can be useful. So here's an example, some kind of uh, cheap surgical forceps, I suppose. You can buy these usually for a dollar, two dollars at almost any uh, flea market vendor or anything like that anymore it seems. <clears throat> um, uh, you could also use a needle on those pliers if you're in real trouble or anything like that. Um, so what I generally will do is before I bonk the bees down I'm just going to see if I can get this can lifted up a little bit and get a grip on it here with my fingers. Now I'm wearing gloves today which is going to make this more difficult than it needs to be. Um, part of the reason I'm wearing gloves here is that I've got a couple fingers that are smashed up I don't really want to get stung or don't have a fingernail. So <clears throat> now I've got my can, I got a good hold on it. And what I'm going to do though is uh, prior to pulling this can out, I'm going to bonk these bees down. And it's kind of convenient too to keep your plate handy. Um, now this particular queen cage, something else that's different you'll see amongst producers. Some will use a metal strap hanger. This particular producer uses a poly strap uh, hanger. Uh, if you're running the Jay's Bees cages, they'll have a pink um, specialized hanger that fits in the cage. Um, but uh, I like these poly straps. There's benefits and negatives to all the different types of hangers. These are easy uh, to recover, relatively easy to hang. But I got to get that queen out of there. <clears throat> I bonk the bees down, pull my can out, and then I got to get my queen cage loose here. They just use a regular office staple. Hold that down. We'll pull her out. I'm just going to put the top on here just to keep some of the bees in. I'm going to verify that she's alive. And so again, this one has attendance in the cage. I can see her walking around there now. One of the things about this, there's a dead attendant here. Uh, if I pull the candy cork on this, what will happen is that um, the attendant uh, will probably end up blocking the exit for the queen. So if you're doing slow release, it doesn't matter actually, any slow release system, even if there wasn't attendants in the cage, you're going to have to come back and verify the queen's physically been released. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll pull the cork. I could quick release her because she's been with these bees now. This is their seventh day. Um, because uh, again, these are these were spare packages we kept as reserves in case of problems somewhere. Um, I could release her right into the colony right away, do a direct release. 
uh, but I'll just slow release her anyway just to illustrate it here so again you need um, the cork again this has candy in the end and a Benton cage and you can pull the cork out of this end now if you're dealing with a California mini cage or something like that where there's no candy nothing that provides a barrier for the queen to walk out uh, when you pull that cork out and you're gonna put in a marshmallow or a candy tube there's black candy tubes as well that stick in these holes um, with a California mini cage what you have to do is you gotta make sure you're paying attention where that queen is when you pull that cork out because she'll probably walk right out of the hole so generally when you pull the cork in those cages uh, you've got to take and put your finger over the end right away and keep that so that she doesn't escape until you got the marshmallow or the candy tube shoved in there to provide a blockage for the bees. Well the Jay's Bees cage those have a candy tube built into them and they're filled with candy but you want to double check to make sure there's candy in it before you pull the cap. They have a pink cap that comes off there. So she's alive and well. Now there's different strategies here in terms of how to go about this. If it was colder temperature what I'd do is I'd hang her last. I'd put her in my pocket and uh, keep her warm and then I'd hang her last. It's nice here today um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably hang her first in this, um, uh, in this cage. So I got my cork out. Uh, I'm going to hang her first. So what I'm going to do set these girls aside for a minute. <clears throat> now I want to hang her, this is the back of my hive here. I'm going to hang her towards the back center and she's going to hang candy end down. <clears throat> now you'll see some people say, oh, should hang candy up. Well, yeah, fine, until the candy melts and it drowns her in the cage. Uh, the reason they like to hang them candy up is that, well, with these Benton cages anyway, is that if an attendant dies in the process, like I got one in there, it's an attendant that's dead, uh, they'll block the exit and the bees can't get her out. But I'm gonna come back and check anyway in a few days and make sure she got released. She might be blocked in there, but the bees will take care of her and feed her in the process. So I'm gonna put her roughly in the middle here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this frame here because it doesn't have so much honey on it. And I'm gonna sandwich her in the comb. Now I'm going <coughs> into drawn comb here you want to make sure that this cage, when you hang it, that the screen is accessible and the screen is parallel to the seam. Okay? If you hang it so that this face of the screen is against the comb, you're going to kill your queen. Bees can't feed her, especially in a mini uh, cage. That's a problem. The Jay's Bees cages have more, um, they're a plastic mesh almost all the way around, so maybe not quite as risky that way, but still. Um, give them the most surface area that they can to interface with that queen. You can see these bees are coming up and, and they're already kind of glowing back on. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I've got comb in here. So I'm going to be able to take advantage of the comb. I'm going to press her kind of into the comb a little bit. And I'm going to push this one up against it. And that'll kind of press that in there and that'll hold it. <clears throat> and then just for security, I can take the strap and I can just kind of bend it over a little bit. And once I get these other ones in there, uh, I'll be in good shape to, to keep that together. So Now sometimes, too, you're not going to be able to push those hard enough to get all your spacing right. And that's okay for now. It doesn't matter. So again, warm weather, I can hang her first. Cold weather, I'd hang her last. I get the bees in, and uh, before I put my frames in, then I'd hang her, hang her last. You want her towards the top rear of the hive is where you want her. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bulk bees. I'm going to get them shook down and then I'm going to dump them. So I'm going to knock them down. Just verify my queen cage didn't fall. I'm going to dump and dump. 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 dump. You don't have to get everybody, at least in warm weather. You're not going to get everybody anyway. <coughs> This cage, then what I'll typically do is I'm up on a wagon here, but typically I'll set it uh, alongside so that the extra bees can come out and find their way, find their way home. I'll do that yet. And then what I'm going to do is bees are already kind of leveling out pretty fast. If it's colder, they'll clump together and you just come through and just gently level them out and either do it with your hand or with a hive tool, whatever you feel comfortable with. Verify my queen cage is still hanging. I'll put some frames back in. I got some honey frames to the outside here. Put those to the outside yet. 
What you don't want to have happen is you don't want that queen cage to fall to the bottom of the hive, especially in cold temperature because the bees won't cluster around her and then she'll be history. She'll die in the bottom of the hive. So you got to make sure you got them hanging good when you do this. So I got the bees in there. Everybody's happy there. I'm going to throw on a pollen patty. Pollen patty is going to go towards the front of the hive here. Now because I'm in a story and a half, um, I don't have as many bees coming up. A lot of them are down, but they'll come up and they're clustering around. Now sometimes in cold weather, what you end up doing <coughs> is uh, you might reserve some bees in that package, not dump everybody in, then hang your queen if it's cold, and then dump some bees on top of her so that the bees know immediately where she is and they come to her right away. Again, it's warmer here today, so the bees are already coming up and they're coming around that cage. I got my pollen patty in, get that drone out of the way. I'm going to put my inner cover on, get it seated down on there good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my feeder on. So I'm top feeding here right now with pail feeders. Eventually I'll switch these out. I'll go to frame feeders inside for the summer and fall. Uh, but right now i got top feeder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this over the front entrance. Uh, these are vacuum style feeders. You want to make sure the lids are down tight when you do this. It's a vacuum style feeder. So when I invert it, it'll run a little bit of syrup. Plug the syrup. I'll put it right on there. Now you want to make sure the hives are not totally level. You know, a little pitch to them, but you don't want extreme pitch to them. Then I'm going to put a uh, surround around that just to protect the feeder. Just like so. And then i got to put my cover back on. I've got a migratory cover here. And then I need a brick or a rock for the top of that. But that's the extent of my package install. Now again, I'm slow releasing that queen. I'm going to come back in three days and make sure she's out. Now the reality is, um, sometimes with candy plugs, the bees can clear those out in a day. Sometimes they never clear them out and you got a slow releaser. So those are some of the fundamentals of it. Now, things that can go wrong in the process. You can put a queen in the colony like this. I verified she's alive, everything's good. And you come back and three days later, she's hanging there and all the attendants are dead and she's dead as well. And what that probably indicates is that there could have been a shook queen in the package. When the guys are shaking bees and they're shaking bees into these packages, what happens is, is that um, they have to go through those parent colonies, depending upon how they're doing the shaking. There's different ways to do it. But the ones that are actually pulling frames and scanning, sometimes they miss queens. Doesn't happen often, but it happens enough. And so the indicators when you have shook queens, generally is that all the attendants will be dead and the queen will be dead in the cage. Um, sometimes it's not, you see it different ways. Sometimes they'll, um, the, they'll be fine going in and then you hang them and then they die uh, and then they, all the attendants, everybody's dead. Um, in those kinds of situations, <coughs> the best strategy is to wait a little bit because of the fact that you don't know. If you put another queen in there and you hang another, you know, got a replacement queen, you hang her, they could kill her right away too. Especially if there's a, if there's a shook queen in there, that's probably what would happen. Um, other things you want to be monitoring for, packages, uh, they will have pests that come along with them. Sometimes there's hive beetles, sometimes there's mites, it just kind of depends. You always have to be monitoring that uh, as well. So that's a quick um, quick install. Uh, I would not recommend using Boardman feeders, which are entrance feeders, especially in the spring and colder temperatures, because the syrup gets too cold. The bees have to break cluster to come down if it's cold, and they'll starve. Um, the um, <clears throat> other thing about Boardman feeders, especially you get in the spring, it's warmer. It's a possibility of robbing happening, depending upon how you um, um, how you've got that feeder configured in there. So. Um, stay away from the boarding feeders, that's our opinion anyway. Uh, either use a hive top feeder, or internal feeder, or, or a vacuum feeder like a mason jar or pails or things like that uh, when you do it. This package cage then, I'm just going to set that out here alongside. In fact, I might just bounce some of these girls off from the outsider out there. I'll set this along here and it'll take uh, 
a couple hours when it's nice out and they'll eventually vacate all that and we'll be in pretty good shape for the most part. So that's a quick package install. Alright. Hello, this is Richard Capital. What I'm going to do in this one, I'm going to do another package install, but just for illustration, I'm going to quick release the queen in this one to show how it goes. Now, um, again, generally when bees are in transport, like these bees have been in transport, what you'll find is that um, the bees will become acclimated to the queens. Usually, we figure it takes three, four days or so. I know these bees have been a lot longer than that with these packages because um, it's been about six days. And the reason is these were spare packages I was holding as reserves in case we had trouble with any of our packages we were distributing. And they're getting now, I, we feed them every day um, that, uh, um, that we have them. We transport them and, and uh, take care of them and everything else, all the duration we have them. And I know from other ones that I've installed, I still got about, in most of them, these are on syrup. I've got about uh, a quarter of a can of syrup left in there. But again, we feed them about three times a day uh, just to make sure. Because with liquid syrup feeders and cans, you can never know for a fact if those things are working or not. If the holes don't get punched right, um, that could be a problem. I've even seen, not from bees that we get from, but, but other producers where they've had trouble where the cans are upside down, so the feeder holes are not in the right spot because bees can't access anything. So stupid things that happen, uh, but that's why we feed bees and we kind of monitor packages as we've got them sitting. Plus two, the other thing that will make a difference in that is what you're holding your bees at for temperature. So like for instance, when we are distributing bees, um, where we keep them is dark, and then we also keep it right around uh, 53, 54 degrees typically. So um, they're uh, a little bit slower metabolism wise, so they don't suck through the syrup as fast. If you've uh, got bees and you're keeping them somewhere as warm, they're going to suck through syrup a little faster overall. So in any event, I've got my package cage here. I'm going to get them ready to go. So here again, uh, similar to the previous one, this one has a, um, has a um, plate on the top. And uh, again, if you're in wood cages, these are just stapled down. If you're in plastic cages, it's a sliding plate. I'm collecting a lot of bees from around here as I'm doing this. <coughs> um, uh, what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to bonk these bees down and I'm going to get my syrup can out. I talked about the issue of syrup cans, sometimes the cages, it can be tough to get them out. And generally what I like to do is get the, the can coming up a little bit so I can get my fingers on it. And uh, then I'll bonk these bees down and get them knocked to the bottom of the cage so I can pull the can out. I'll put my plate back on temporarily after I get the queen pulled out of there and check her out. So the bees are down. This syrup can's about a quarter full. I'm going to pull my queen cage out. This one's on a um, poly strap hanger. Just going to put the cover on there for a minute. So this queen's in good shape. All of her attendants are alive. Everybody's good. Uh, cold temperature, I'd install her last. Um, or if I'm doing quick release, I'm, uh, I'm going to install her last. So I'm uh, normally I put her in my pocket. It's nice and warm out here today. I'm just going to let the bees uh, find her. I'm going to get ready to install these bees. I've got uh, about let's see, I got four, I got six, I got four frames out of here right now, and uh, it gives me enough space I can dump bees in there. So I'm going to knock them down once more. Dump. You don't have to get everybody. Get 99% of them. Again, they're flying. They're already climbing back up. I'll get that cage set where I want it here in a minute. Uh, warm weather, they're, they'll climb up fast. These here today, I'm just going to spread them a little bit, but they're already climbing up. 
Look how many bees have already fallen around that cage. And they're not um, aggressive or anything towards her. They're just walking on there. They're not trying to bite the screen or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get set up here to quick release her. And what I want to do, get some of these girls out of the way for a minute, if they'll let me. I'm going to pull this strap hanger off because that will be in my way for doing that. Let's get my strap hanger off. I'm going to hold the screen down and pull the staple out the end. Okay. What you don't want to do is you don't want this queen to fly away. Even though she's nice and big and fat, she could fly. What I'm going to do then is I got the staple out of this end. I'm going to put it down in there against the frame. And then I'm going to let her walk out in amongst bees on the frame. I have to choose which side I'm going to do this on. Whichever frame I ever walk on, that's the one that I'm going to try to keep track of her so I know what's going on here in the process. So, And you can do this with a hive tool. You don't want to do it with your fingers. I'm up kind of high here. I don't like it up high, but I'm going to work it this way. I'm just going to get her screen open. I'm going to get it against the thing. I'm going to watch where she goes and she walks out. And let her walk out. There she goes. Double check. Make sure she didn't walk on my finger. All right. All right. And there she goes, there she goes, there she goes. She's already walking down and disappearing pretty fast here, so that's good. All right, so now <coughs> she's went down and she's um, uh, down. She kind of went in and around some frames here. down there and just going to ease this in now so this one is a, she's on that frame adjacent to this little propolis on there I'll put that one in get this one in This one in. The reason you want to have her down in there is you do not want her to fly away very bad. I've had it happen. Pop the screen off and had her down by the thing and flew right out. And then if that happens, what you do is you just hang tight and you wait. And sometimes you can hear her flying and she'll fly back. Sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes you can catch her, she'll drop. Sometimes you can catch her. So you just kind of have to, it's easier though if she's not uh, out flying around loose. It's a lot better situation overall. So I get my inner cover on there. Notice how these bees like the queen cage. Her pheromones on there, which brings up a good point. <clears throat> if you get a dead queen in a cage, the best strategy is, is hang her in the colony anyway. Dead queen and all. Hang her in there just as if you're installing like normal. And the reason is this cage has pheromone on it. And it'll kind of hold those bees in there until you can get a replacement queen from your supplier. Um, so that's always the best strategy. Or until you kind of know a little better what's going on, why that queen is, um, why that queen is dead, dead in the cage. So sort it out. Give it a, uh, two or three days to figure out what's going on. But see how those bees... Uh, they climb right on there again. It's not so much because of the candy, it's because of her pheromones there. So, all right, I take that away. I gotta get my feeder and my surround on there. So again, I'm uh, vertical, uh, vacuum feeding. Make sure your lids are on tight on your vacuum feeders. Invert, let it run a little syrup off the front. Get on the top here like that. I gotta get a surround around there. This one happens to uh, 
stand a little taller than the that, and I gotta get a cover on there. <clears throat> and I rock on there. I put my pollen pad in already, so I think I'm good to go. So there we are. That colony is in and ready to rock. You can see I've collected some bees on the cage again. I'm gonna knock those off. Go. I'll set that cage out here and let everybody kind of vacate from there. All right, very good. Okay, so then this is kind of what you start to see post install around the entrances. I dropped a little syrup on the front there, so those bees are interested in that. You can kind of see there's a lot of activity, <clears throat> some bees orienting on the front. Uh, they're just trying to kind of get this all figured out now, their new home and stuff like that, and what that looks like. Um, and it'll take a little bit, probably take, depending upon the weather, <clears throat> um, it could take a half hour or so, and then they'll kind of get settled back down here and things will um, things will get uh, more normal-ish. <clears throat> As you get towards evening, uh, they'll definitely start uh, popping inside, and then tomorrow, Things look very, very normal in terms of activity coming and going, but they're a little bit disoriented right now, trying to figure out what happened here to their world. Uh, it's very much like an artificial swarm in terms of how things, how things progress. Okay, I just wanted to show you a little bit what things look like uh, about an hour to uh, half an hour to an hour after installation. So you can see the bees now. Um, Pretty much everybody's evacuated out of the package cage. There's just a couple rogue stragglers in there. Uh, you can see a lot of the activity now is normalized at the entrance. And bees are kind of coming and going. There's bees orienting to the to the front. They're carrying out a little bit of debris here and there. Uh, occasionally shake packages in. And even in the package cages, there's occasionally some dead bees in there. And so they're hauling some of those out and getting everything kind of in shape uh, for their home.